Brothers and sisters, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. And welcome to a new episode of Health from Huda TV. Men above 50, above the age of 50, they start to be worrying and worried about the uh, problems that prostate usually causes at, this, at that age. Um, with us today is Dr. Muhammad Hatim, a consultant of, of uh, urosurgery, to talk to us about this uh, issue. Dr. Muhammad, welcome to our new episode. Uh, the prostate. Actually, most of the people don't know where is the prostate or what does the prostate do, but they usually worry about the problems they, they might face or that they're already facing. So, uh, first of all, we need to know where's the prostate and what does it do? The prostate is a gland situated just uh, distal to the bladder neck. It is, is surrounds the first part of the urethra. Yes. It's composed of three segments, the central zone, the uh, interstitial, and the peripheral zone. Yes. Uh, it's uh, a, the first four centimeter of the urethra, you can see in this picture. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. This is a picture here mm -hmm. showing the prostate yes uh, this is a picture showing the prostate yes where uh, it's compressing the urethra yes first four centimeter of the urethra passing through the prostate mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, a gland present in all men yes here it is yes you can see this is a picture of hypertrophied prostate Yes. Uh, this is where the, the, it is this, located. The structure, the big structure, or is the uh, the is wide the structure. This yes, is I the mean bladder, bladder and, and this is it's at the base of the, the bladder. The tube in the middle is the urethra. Yes, and this is the prostate. It surrounds and, the. And here you can see is the seminal vesicles here, right and left. Exactly. You can see yes. it. Mm -hmm. It's around the the urethra. Yes, the outlet of the bladder. So yes, this is where it is situated. And what does it do? Prostate, it it secretes the seminal fluid. Yeah. The seminal fluid that nourishes the se the the sperms itself. Mm -hmm. This is the function of the prostate. Yes. So why is it always that um, many of the of the men at this age, at the age of fifty, as we said, or usually above fifty, and sometimes even earlier than this, have some uh, problems with the uh, with the uh, with the prostate, or at least they're worrying about the problems with the prostate. Dr. Grahmad, all men above the age of 40 or um, late 40s or early 50s, the prostate start to enlarge. Yes. It's hypertrophied. In all men. Hypertrophied. Hypertrophied. It's uh, hypertrophied. It means the the cells itself increase in size, mm -hmm. not increase in count. Yes. It's increase in size of the prostate. Why does this happen? Nothing we can say is accurately the cause of penine prostatic hyperplasia. Yes. Uh, some theorists say it's due to decrease the level of uh, uh, estrogen testosterone level. Mm -hmm. uh, some say uh, it's due to uh, it, you know, enlargement in the cells. No definite theory, mm -hmm. accurate theory for penine prostatic hyperplasia. Yes, but. The effects of the enlargement of this enlargement of the uh, prostate on the uh, on the uh, urinary system and the reproductive system as well. Uh, sometimes it's uh, it's dramatic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, not the enlargement of the prostate, not mostly cause symptoms. Mm -hmm. This is uh, 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 we we should uh, all people should notice is there is no relation between the size of the prostate and the symptoms it causes. Sometimes we have prostate. 30 or 40 grams. Usually the prostate is 20 grams, by the way. Yes. We sometimes we have prostate 30 or 40 grams and it causes severe symptoms up to retention, obstruction. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have prostate up to 100 gram and it doesn't cause symptoms. Yes. So what it depends this? on the, yes. the, 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 the zones that enlarge. Ah, so it's, it's, it's the, the central area zone of the, of the, the peripheral zone. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so 
it's the area where the prostate is uh, is diseased or enlarged yes. that it, that determines if it's symptomatic or not, and uh, how how bad it is that causes the pain. That's right. So, usually, what uh, would somebody with uh, an enlarged prostate, let's say the lay name of it, um, should expect? I mean, the symptoms. The symptoms of enlarged prostate varies from one patient to another. Yes. We have a symptom score for the patients, mm -hmm. either from asymptomatic or mild symptoms up to severe symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the patients start to have weak stream, double stream. He, has the, he, he comes to the clinic saying, I have the urine coming in two ways. Yes. Weak stream. The stream was not like before. It's not like before. It starts to be weak, dribbling. Sometimes the patient has a sense of incomplete voiding. After he goes to the toilet, mm -hmm. he feels still, he has discomfort, and he still has a little of Needs urine. He to go again. He has to go again. Yeah. The most annoying symptom is the nicturia. Nicturia, it means the urine has to wake him up from bed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes patients have nocturia up to 10 times. Is that because of the retention? No, it's because of irritation of urine yes. uh, by the obstructed uh, by the obstructed urethra, it becomes irritative. Mm -hmm. It's irritated to a few amount of urine. He goes, but he has few amount of urine. Mm -hmm. Also, one of the annoying things, uh, one of the uh, acute things that happen is acute retention. The patient is retained. The urethra, the urethra is completely obstructed by the prostate, and he has to fix the urethral catheter, start treatment, and then investigate the patient, and we see, I, will he respond to medical treatment or not? By retention, is, you mean that he, he, cannot he cannot pass urine? Pass urine at all. At all. Yes. And you examine his bladder, you found it's full of urine. Mm -hmm. So, the pain coming from the prostate, is it always because of the retention? No. No. Mostly, the retention is a suprapubic pain. But pain in the perineum from the urethra, uh, from the prostate, sorry. Uh, is caused by infection, infarction in a small uh, part of the uh, prostate. Infarction is, a, is the death of the death tissues. Death of a part, yes. yes. Uh, infection, chronic prostatitis. We, we hear a lot about uh, prostatitis. I am having yes. prostatitis. I'm having chronic prostatitis. Uh, this causes pain. But punam prostatic hyperplasia itself doesn't cause pain. But somebody would have this uh, this problem and would not have the pain, but still have other symptoms of the of the uh, of the prostatic enlargement, like for example the infection. Yes. Would would that take him to the uh, to 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 be alarmed and go to the doctor? Yes. Yes. Uh, as we see in the next picture here. You can see this is a picture of. You can see it here. This is yes. a picture of the normal bladder, oh, and yes. this is an enlarged prostate. Yes, that's very much. You can see here oh. the bladder is smooth. There is no irregularity inside the wall. Here, there is obstruction by the prostate. Mm -hmm. You can see there is irregular wall. There is thickened wall. There is infection. We have residual urine, something we call residual urine. It means the urine that stays in the bladder after the patient evacuates. Yes, stagnant does not go down. Stag yes. yes, and this causes recurrent urinary tract infection. And it causes, uh, of course, some irritation, as you said before. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, other uh, causes of, uh, of uh, other symptoms of urinary tract infection is uh, dysuria. The patient can experience dysuria, not also a weak stream. If the patient can experience dysuria and is uh, mistaken with the urinary tract infection, the acute yes. urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, prostate has many symptoms. The patient can present with many symptoms. But all we call lower urinary tract obstructive or irritative symptoms. Yes. yes. So, a patient with, um, with these symptoms would come to you in the clinic. And, um, of course, you would uh, do examination for the prostate and uh, you would do some uh, investigation and you have to, uh, to, to know the problem, how, how bad the problem is. Uh, how would you systematically go through this uh, uh, management or the, the, the procedure of, uh, of diagnosing the problem? 
As you said first, history of the patient can guide you. Mm -hmm. Is the patient having obstructive or rotative symptoms, uh, long-standing obstruction or nearby obstruction, the severity, the symptom score of this patient, we give symptom score from 1 to 18. Uh, that's it regarding the history. Then yeah. we start to investigate the patient. Uh, we have to examine, sure, the patient. <coughs> we can examine their post voiding residual urine by ultrasound, for example. We, we, can, uh, we have to examine the patient per rectum. Mm -hmm. And this an in annoying examination, but we have to do it. Yes. For all patients who ha are having prostate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very important to differentiate either it is benign or malignant hyper. Yes, that's very important, of course. Okay. And you can, you can differentiate that even with the examination? Not only, yes. but it is one of the main important issues. Mm -hmm. Uh, what further investigations? Then, then you start to investigate the patient regarding his urinary tract system. You have to do ultrasound with the assessment of the kidneys and the bladder, the post voiding residual. Mm. Uh, you have to measure how much urine output yes. he has. And you, you, you get to know how much is left in there in the, in the bladder as you well. You are right. Mm -hmm. And the effect of the, the, this obstruction of the kidneys. If there damage to the kidneys, is there uh, dilatation to the kidneys due to this increase in the residual volume or not? Another investigation, important investigation, we have to do what's called PSA. Yes. Uh, it's the hormone of the prostate that elevates not only in malignant, but mainly in malignant uh, uh, enlargement of the prostate. Yeah, we have a short break, and uh, we should come back and discuss more about the investigations okay. for the prostatic enlargement brothers and sisters we have a short break please stay tuned and we'll be back in a short a short period until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum and welcome back. We're still talking about prostatic problems and with us is uh, Dr. Muhammad Hatem, consultant of your surgery. Dr. Muhammad, we were talking about the investigations and how would we manage uh, somebody who has uh, a prostatic enlargement. We stopped by that you have to do a hormonal test. PSA. PSA. It's called PSA. And uh, the prostate how important is this? It's a simplification for prostate-specific angel. Yes. Uh, it's a blood test, simple blood test in all laboratories is present. Uh, usually we have cut-offs for this uh, investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, usually the patients shouldn't have PSA more than four. Four? Four. Yes. If it's more than four, we have to do more investigations for having cancer prostate. Ah, yes. Yes. So that this is where it comes to define either this is a just a, a, a hypertrophy, as you yes, said. Yes, benign hypertrophy, a benign or it is a malignant or it's a malignant cancer. one. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, another investigation, we have to do serum creatinine for this patient. Serum creatinine. Serum creatinine that's, uh, for to this see how, how functioning the, uh, how, how the, the, the how harmful is the, 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 the residual urine for this patient. Because of, because of the, 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 the serum creatinine is to test the function of the, the kidneys. The function of the kidneys. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes patient is present with renal failure. And when we fix the irrestrial castor, after a few days, this renal failure disappears. The kidney regains its function. That's because of the, of the, the obstruction. obstruction. Yes. Mm. That's it. Do you have to take a biopsy from the, uh, from the uh, process? This is when we have an elevated PSA, mm -hmm. or when we are doing PR and there is a query nodule, suspicious nodule, something like that. You have to take a biopsy. You have to take a biopsy, and it's done by a uh, transrectal ultrasound. And it's not that painful? Not that painful. Not that painful. Not that painful. Yeah. So now that you have uh, done most of your investigations, your, your, your situation now is uh, either it's um, just a, a benign hypertrophy or enlargement, or it is a, a tumor. Of course, a tumor, you have to deal with it more aggressively than the, uh, the benign um, uh, situation. But for the, uh, let's, let's shift to the benign uh, side, which is more common, I believe. Um, how, how would you manage this, uh, this patient? First, I would like to say there is nothing called protective surgery. Mm -hmm. 
nowadays we hear a lot of people saying, I am going to have, uh, my doctor told me, I'm going to have prostate as a protective. It's yes, enlarged, this more so I have states. to do surgery. Yes. It's untrue. This is completely wrong. We have indications for surgery, we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. First, we start medical treatments for all patients, even if, it ha if he has retention. Yes. We start medical treatment. There are many types of medical treatment, something uh, called alpha blockers, which uh, start on smooth muscles, something called fenestrides, which start acting, but after a, l a little a bit longer time, uh, on the fibrous part of the prostate, then we show the improvement on medical treatment. Symptoms mm -hmm. improvement, and if there, there is malfunctioning of the urinary tract, is it improved or not? Yes, but when, when somebody has a, a, a prostatic problems, we usually hear that um, even if he is coming to, to complain of other things, he tells you, I'm on medication for the prostate yes. for life. Is it for life? Yes, it's for life. So the when you stop medication, for life. you don't stop it. It's daily treatment, like treatments of hypertension or diabetes. Can you stop treatment for hypertension or diabetes? No, you should c That's continue it. with it. It's the same for the prostate. Mm -hmm. Nothing could regress the prostate. Medically speaking. Medically. Yes. Yes, we are speaking medically. Yes. So he should note he, are, he is going to um, have this treatment for life. Mm -hmm. If he is accepting, so that's good. That's good. So... Um, usually the medication uh, gives a good result with what kind of patients? We can predict, but some patients who have uh, the, the, the smooth or the stromal part of the prostate enlarged, mm -hmm. they have good outcome with medical treatment. When the fibrous part is the main enlarged, mm -hmm. there is a little bit improvement or sometimes no improvement with medical treatment. So how much time do you give for the medication to, to say, no, this is not working, we have to shift to another solution, or, yes, this is going well, we should go ahead and uh, proceed with the medication all the time? Um, according to the patient, we have uh, emergency situation, mm -hmm. as having retention, for example, or there, are, there is malfunctioning of the urinary tract, mm -hmm. there is elevation in the serum creat, we should interfere. Yes. We can give a uh, trial for medical treatment. But all other patients, we have to start medical treatment. And we increase the dose of medical treatment to reach the maximal dose. If there is no improvement, the patient is still complaining. If there is no uh, improvement for the patient, we have to interfere. After what time of period? A About period of time. two weeks to two one weeks. month. Yes. Yeah, to one month. So now somebody who is not satisfied with the medication What's the next step? You go to surgery right away or you have something in between? We should investigate the size of the prostate. Size of the prostate differs uh, from one patient to another and differs in our uh, management, surgical how, management. How do you know the size? By the ultrasound. By the ultrasound. Okay. Uh, or the, the transrectal ultrasound. We can mm -hmm. use it. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the patients having small prostates mm -hmm. up to, yeah. up to uh, 100 grams, we can use what's called transurethral uh, resection of the prostate. We can see here in this picture, this is how we enter with the cystoscope. Mm -hmm. We can see this picture. Yes. This is a picture showing, this is the loops of the prostate. You can see it. On the sides? On the sides. And you're going through yes. the urethra? Through the urethra. With a scope? By a piece of metal. Yes. Called the resectoscope. Yes. And we start to cut through this tissue and remove all this tissue. But th this does not have any effect on the on the urethra itself. No. 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 Yes. Uh, if the patient, uh, we can see the other picture. This is showing. The other picture. Yes. Showing. Here, there is a piece cutted from the. Oh, yes, you this is a resected, a resected part of the, of, the, uh, yes, of the prostate. of the prostate. And this, this makes the prostate smaller in size. Uh, yes, we can remove, mostly hold the tissue of the prostate up to the capsule. We reach the capsule. To the, to the outer boundary. To the something. outer boundary. So, and this does not affect the function of the prostate? No, there is no prostate anymore. Yes. After we do prostatectomy, either transurethral or uh, open prostatectomy, there is no prostate anymore. 
And how, how does that reflect on the, on the function of the prostate? There is no semen coming out. The patient should notice that if he is going to have intercourse, uh, there is no semen will go out. Mm -hmm. Most of the semen, if there is semen from the seminal vesicles also, will, uh, will enter the bladder and then comes out with urine. Mm -hmm. That's now, of course, this would uh, affect the, uh, the fertility of this person. Yes. Patients with uh, more uh, usual prostates, uh, we use open techniques, or nowadays we use laser. There are different types of laser where we can use it to remove the prostate, and it's much more safer than uh, what we said, uh, transurethral resection. There is no blood loss. We don't use um, certain, uh, we use certain irrigants which are not harmful, don't cause uh, what we call TUR syndrome, uh, something, some complications of the operation. Uh, it's much more safer, the laser. And, it, and you go through the urethra as Still well? Still through the urethra, all same, through the urethra. Same road? Yes. Yeah, but uh, you mean the, the differences in the, uh, how, how you resect how and how we much resect. you resect? Exactly. The laser vaporizes the tissues. Yes. Uh, resection, we resect the tissues. Uh -huh. But the laser, there is a rod, we pass it and we vaporize the tissues. Yes. So but what other, other ways to, to be able to treat the, uh, the, the prostatic enlargement? Are there uh, we said ways? if it's a huge prostate, yes. uh, we can use the open surgery. Yeah, that will be a big one. very rare to be used now. Yes. We usually use the advanced techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, we remove the whole prostate. Either uh, we open the bladder and remove it through the bladder, or we open the capsule of the prostate and remove it through the capsule of the prostate. Uh, that's all. Some of the patients who um, have uh, the problem of the enlargement of prostate um, get to have some uh, injection in the prostate. Um, how often is that useful? It's not injection uh, in the prostate itself. Yes. Uh, if the patient is incapable for surgery, we yes. use uh, what we call minimally invasive techniques, mm -hmm. like uh, transurethral needle ablation, like uh, cryo, like uh, stenting of the, uh, this part of the urethra. But we use it for the patient incapable for surgery, mm -hmm. unfit for surgery. Mm -hmm. So by the end of this episode, I, I want you to give some um, advice to our audience how to, um, to avoid or at least delay the problems of uh, the prostatic enlargement. And if they do have it, what should they do to avoid the, the, the major complications or problems out of it? Um, they should investigate early. Mm -hmm. People after age of 40 should do PSA early. Yes. Um, maybe every three years at the age uh, above the age of 40, mm -hmm. uh, every one year above the age of 50. Mm -hmm. uh, investigation, routine investigations like ultrasound should be held every two years at least. Mm -hmm. uh, any symptoms, any irritative ob or obstructive symptoms, what we said, lower urinary tract symptoms, should be investigated. Mm -hmm. Recurrent urinary tract inf infection should be investigated. And treated, of course. So, uh, don't delay the management of your prostate. It will harm all the urinary tracts. As I said, some people came with complete renal failure. Mm -hmm. So be cautious with your prostate. Uh, treat it early. It will live longer with you. Dr. Mohammed, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, right. It's been a very informative uh, uh, talk. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, um, I would like to thank you. And I hope it's been a beneficial episode this time. Um, our email is health at hooda.tv and of course our website is health.tv. We hope to hear from you and until next episode, we wish you a happy and healthy life inshallah. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.